Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm going to set up a double-sided milling job on this guitar neck and it's going to be a good opportunity to show off a bunch of new Carimoto 3.5 features. So let's get started. The first thing that I do is ensure that my stock offsets are set up, uh, either absolute or relative depending upon how I'm going to do this job. We can see that this part is set to the middle as opposed to the top or the bottom and the reason for that is we're doing a double-sided job and that's usually the best way to do it. Also, because this is a double-sided job, we're going to want to establish a plane, which we're going to cut down to from each side. And in um, the situation, that's going to be called the Z-bottom. When you set it in 3.5, you get a visual plane that shows you where you're going to cut down to on each of the flip operations. And this is new. The visualization was not there in 3.4. So let's get started with the operation, which is pretty typical for a job like this, which is the roughing operation. And I'm gonna go with this side up on the first pass because it presents us with a flat top and leaves the underbelly, which is gonna be thin for the second pass on the flip operation. So I go in here, add a roughing operation. Let's look at the settings. They're pretty default except for the step down is aggressive. Um, that helps us debug. And then once we get the settings we want, we can set the step down to our final. I'm just going to run a slice operation to see what that gives us. And we'll see that it's doing the inside of the holes, it's doing the, uh, the slot here, and it's doing a cutout. There are a couple things that are not great about this setup. One is that the step down doesn't match this face. Um, and the best way to fix that, or the only way to fix that with a roughing operation, is to go in and say clear faces. And if I slice it again, you'll see that it goes ahead and clears this face but it doesn't clear the top. And that is sometimes intentional because you want to leave the top of the stock unfinished. Um, and so that's another setting. You go clear top, click on that. And now we're clearing the top of the stock and this lower plane here as well. And that's pretty much all we got to do for the roughing operation. You'll notice that it terminates down here at the Z bottom. And that's on purpose for the roughing operation. So the next thing that you want to do is clear out this slot in the middle because the roughing operation is going to leave that really unfinished. We're going to need a finer bit for that. And the best way to tackle that is with a contouring operation. So I'm going to disable the roughing operation with a command click, go in and add a contouring operation. And let's see, let's do it on the Y axis first, which is going to be this direction here. And go ahead and just run that and see what it gives us. And then we're going to dial in the configuration that we want. So the default operation for contouring is to really do the entire part. That's not suitable for our purposes. It's great for litho panes and you know reliefs and things like that. We want to constrain it to this pocket here. So we go back and we say inside only, um, which is also insufficient because um, I'll just show you. While we're not cutting out the part, we're still cutting a bunch of areas we don't care about. So there's one further tweak to that, which is curves only and let's see what that gives us. So here you see that it's really just attacking the curved surfaces inside of the slot, which is what we want. We could make that a finer pitch for the final, but for right now that gives us what we want. There is another curved surface that we're gonna to wanna to deal with, and that's this one right here. So we're gonna disable this for the purposes of testing only, go back and add another contour operation, when we do that in Kirimoto and this one is set to Y, the next one detects that and automatically sets it to X. So let's go ahead and do the X contouring and see what that picks up. So here we see that we're picking up the, um, this radius surface here, going from the top flat to the middle flat. There's one other feature which is interesting in 3.5. You've got a bunch of contour operations or different operations that look the same, and there's an ability to add a node at the top. So you can click on that and say, well, this is for the slot. Actually, this contour operation is for the slot as well. But when you have a lot of repeated operations that tackle different parts of um, your job, you want to be able to quickly sort of look at that and say, what is this for? The next thing we need to tackle are these small holes in the back. So the roughing operation got these for us we're going to have to deal with this separately with a separate operation because the quarter inch that we're using of the quarter inch end mill that we're using for the roughing operation isn't really going to satisfy these. So in this case, I'm going to go through and click a, or add a trace operation with a 16 inch 
in mill, uh, go to the bottom of the part here and select the circles that, or the holes that I want to drill. And then make sure these are disabled and test this out, see what it gives us. So you'll notice that this is terminating at this Z bottom plane. That is an option that you can toggle right here. But for our purposes, we're just going to go, let's assume the end mill is not long enough. We're only going to go that far into it. And this is where controlling the Z bottom is really useful for this job. The next thing we're going to want to do is add tabs because we're going to flip this thing. And if I go in here to add tabs, you'll notice that tabs float on top of the Z bottom. And we can change that to midline so that the tab will show up in the midline to that. Let's go ahead and add a few cutout tabs here. There we, there we go. And now the last thing that we're going to want to do before we add a flip operation is to add a registration operation. This is going to give us the ability to flip apart with dowel pins to reposition it uh, when it's flipped to the other side. There are many ways to do this and a registration is the way that I usually recommend or I do for my jobs. And to do this, I'm going to go and extend the stock a little bit because when I generate this registration mark, it's going to appear between the end of the part and the end of the stock halfway in between. And this is where you would drill a hole and then place a pen after you flip it to re-register it. You can choose two or three. Um, in this, this case, using three puts two on one side and one on the other. That prevents you from flipping it around on the wrong axis. And the other thing we want to do is make sure that that cuts all the way through into the wasteboard or something below the stock so that you're pinning something. And so we go and say Z extend, let's add this 10 millimeters or a centimeter and we run that and we'll see that that actually cuts through into the wasteboard or whatever is below your stock. And then the last thing that we're going to do is add a flip operation and the flip operation, as it says, allows us to flip the part and then work on the backside. However, you'll notice that the Z plane, the Z bottom plane didn't move. And so this is an option. So when you flip it, you'll see this plane moves and is tracking with the part when the part flips so that your cuts are consistent from side to side. All right, continuing on with the second side for the cut, we have to decide as a first operation what to do. And I think roughing is the wrong operation to go with here because it's going to want to stop at this Z bottom. That doesn't really work for us because this thin section goes all the way down to the bottom. And because from the other side, that's an undercut, it wouldn't have been cut already. So the thing we're probably going to want to do on this side is to use pocketing operations. And the first pocketing operation that we're going to do is for the flat areas. So let's go ahead and pick the flat areas here and here to start out with and test that and see what it gives us. This is close, but not ideal. We don't really want to pass around these holes here. We want to cover that up. And the option to fix that is outline only. That will ignore all interior features and just clear that face and clear this face over here, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to call this flats. Next thing we're going to do is add a pocket operation that covers the thin part of the neck. And let's just go ahead and run that and see what it gives us. Whoops, I didn't disable this operation first. So now let's go ahead and see what this gives us. And you'll notice this doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. And that's because it's sticking within the interior of the outline of this selected area. And really we want to expand that out further here to capture all the way to the bottom. So let's do that by expanding it a centimeter on either side and try that again. Now we'll see that's cutting all the way down to the base and it's ignoring the Z bottom, which is actually the purpose of the pocketing operation is to be able to work in situations like this. So with these two operations together, we're getting closer to where we want to be and I'm going to label that curved. So we know that we look at these two things, which one that each of them is dealing with. In this case, pocketing can be considered roughing, and we're going to want to finish these curved areas with contour operations the same way we did on the other side. So let's start with a Y contouring pass, leaving curve 
only checked and see where that gets us. So that's pretty close. Uh, we have a problem here because the top of this arch or curve is considered to be flat by the algorithm. So there's a new feature to deal with that and that's called bridging. We're gonna go in and say flat areas between curved areas up to 10 millimeters long are gonna be bridged. Now let's see what that looks like. And there we go, and that's giving us a, a pass over the curved areas. It looks just about right for our purposes. And the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is add a contouring pass in the other direction. And see what that looks like. There we go. And that helps clean up these areas right here that wouldn't have been cleaned up by the other contouring operation. And again, we can set that to any step over to make it as fine as we want or use ball end mills. At this point, there are three more things we have to do to finish this side. That is to clean out these holes, the large holes and the small holes, and do a cut on the outline. The roughing operation took care of these two things on the other side, and so we're gonna do those in a more manual process on this side. Just like the other side, the operation we're gonna to use to do that is a trace operation. Let's start with a quarter inch end mill to clean out the larger holes here. Make sure Z bottom is checked and then check it out and see what that gives us. And that does clean out these holes on this side. And then we'll repeat the operation for the smaller holes on the other side, similar to what we did with the trace operation there. And the last thing to do is to do a cutout on this side. And since we're not using a roughing operation, we're going to be using an outline operation. By default, an outline operation, well, let's just see what it does. Is it similar to a waterline? It's gonna cut the insides and the outsides and all these features, and that's really not ideal. Because it fits in here, we're gonna not wanna cut these out. Or we could have eliminated the previous trace operation and let the outline handle these, but we didn't. So what I'm gonna do here is say, omit through and that's going to cause it to omit any holes that pass through the object. We still have this contouring of a water line here, so we're going to set that to outside only, which basically restricts it to shadow cutting, and that gives us the cutout of the part that we want with the tabs being observed there. And at this point, we're ready on each side to do the final cut, so we can actually run this and animate it if we want now. So there we go, that is the first side. Uh, everything looks proper. The tabs are cut out around. It follows to the bottom with the Z bottom limit. Let's check out the other side. And that's looking pretty good. So the last thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is just export this. And when you do that, you can export a zip file with all the separate operations or as G-code and do that once for each side. I hope this has been useful. I look forward to your feedback. And if you get some time, please check out the Gridspace forums. There is a cam section where you may find a lot of useful information and other people who are also working with Kirimoto.